Excellent. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Probing Paul. This is episode number 34 for March 2019. It's a monthly Q&A. You guys ask questions. I answer them. It's a pretty simple concept. All of the questions from today's video were taken from the comment section from last month's Probing Paul, which you can check out. I'll post a playlist in the description if you want to look at all of the probing Pauls. I've been probed many times and it was always fun. So let's check out the first question without delay from Creepus Explodus 07 who says, my new RX 580 8GB Sapphire keeps overheating and shutting my system down. What should I do? Creepus Explodus, uh, there's some lacking information here, but I'm going to give you some basic generic tips based on what you've told me. Uh, an overheating graphics card is bad. It shouldn't do that, especially if you're not overclocking it yourself. So I would double check, make sure that all of your intakes for your case are clear, free of obstruction, don't have any dust in them or anything. Just make sure it's getting clear, fresh airflow. If that is okay, then you want to take the card itself out, double check the fans, make sure they're not clogged up, make sure you don't have a bunch of dust on the fin stacks themselves. If that still doesn't fix the problem, then you'll probably want to go into disassembling the card and make sure you have good contact between the cooler itself and the GPU because that can lead to overheating. But when a graphics card overheats, it's probably gonna downclock itself rather than just shutting your system down entirely. So that would maybe indicate that you might have a different problem than your graphics card itself. I would point towards the power supply. If you've got a shoddy power supply that's not able to deliver enough power, that could trigger one of the built-in protection systems from the power supply and that would automatically shut off your system. So I would double check your power supply. That might be where the problem actually lies. Next question here is from Robert27. He says, should I get a Ryzen 5 2600 now or wait for Ryzen 3rd gen? He also says, congrats on 1 million and the baby. Thank you. Thank you very much for both of those things. I did hit 1 million between last month's probing Paul and this month's probing Paul. But before I get into that, let me answer your question. Ryzen 5 2600 I've recommended multiple times because you can get it for about 160 to 170 dollars. Six cores, 12 threads, comes with a cooler. It's not the best cooler, but it's an adequate cooler. So it's a great bang for the buck. But we now know that Ryzen 3000 series are probably coming out in June or July. That's what we're looking at. So only about two months, maybe three months until that product actually launches. We're still speculating as to the performance, how many cores will be available on the different processors, but we have at least a reasonable idea of when it's going to launch. So whenever I get this specific question, especially if the new launch is relatively soon, uh, my question to you is what are you using right now? Is it adequate? Is it getting you by? Or is it actively hurting your ability to get work done and causing you massive frustration? If that's the case, then I'd say just upgrade now because not only is this a good deal just on the face of it, but we are seeing some price drops that have been happening recently as well. On our live show on Tuesday, I mentioned the Ryzen 7 2700 coming down to $220. It has unfortunately bounced back up to 240. That's still a reasonably good deal, but I would keep an eye out in the next month to see if there's any really good deals on the existing Ryzen 2000 series processors because they're still very good CPUs. I'll link to that one down in the video description, by the way. But I guess the last thing to point out would be that if you do invest in a 2000 series CPU right now, according to everything we have learned, AM4 will still be the socket for the next gen 3000 series stuff that comes out in a couple months. So you could potentially upgrade the system that you build right now with the 2000 series processor to one of those 3000 series processors down the line. So that gives you a little bit more flexibility in your decision. Hopefully that information helps you out a little bit. Next question here is just from Rick. Very, very simple. Uh, is the triple slot EVGA 2080XC Ultra non-TI worth the price bump over the dual slot versions? I like a quiet and cool GPU as much as the next guy. The dual slot version's on sale for $130 cheaper today, but the price gap is usually $50. So here I've just pulled up EVGA RTX 2080s on Newegg, and we can see they get as expensive as, well, like $900 for the water cool versions, but let's say $800 to $850 for the high-end versions, like the For the Win 3 Ultra with three fans and everything. Thing. The most inexpensive version is the RTX 2080 XC Gaming, and if you add that to the cart, you can see the current sale price, $720. So that's a pretty massive swing, like of $150 to $200 from this sort of more entry-level RTX 2080 up to the higher-end versions. And the thing you got to bear in mind is we're really talking about a difference in clock speed. There's the manufacturer out of the box clock speeds, and then there are the clock speeds that you might be able to get when you overclock yourself. 
My personal opinion is that there's usually a lot of headroom, especially on these aftermarket design cards, even if you're getting those lower end versions compared to the range that they sell in with any given GPU, like an RTX 2080. So my advice to you would be to not spend that amount, especially if you're talking about a price premium of a hundred bucks or more. Uh, if you're talking 20 or $30, then it might be reasonable to get the better version. If it's got a better cooler, it might run a little bit cooler uh, or it might get a little bit better clock speeds, but I would go with the cheaper one, honestly, in this situation. The price difference there just isn't really gonna be represented in the performance you get with the higher end version. Next question here from Captain Capsize. Is it true you need DP or a display port to use FreeSync on NVIDIA GPUs and HDMI to use FreeSync on AMD GPUs? I'm gonna try to answer this really quickly. Yes, NVIDIA GPUs require display port in order to use adaptive sync technology. That includes G-Sync, that also includes if you're using a free sync monitor with an NVIDIA G-Sync capable graphics card, which only works with the 10 series, the GTX 1066 gig and above. Uh, so that includes the RTX series of cards that have launched in the last year or so too. On the AMD side, if you're talking about FreeSync with a FreeSync capable Radeon graphics card and a FreeSync capable monitor, in that case, you can use HDMI or DisplayPort. It's a little bit more flexible there, but do bear in mind, especially if you're looking at FreeSync monitors and you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you should absolutely make sure it has a DisplayPort input. And if you guys want a little bit more on that, I'll link to this PC World article by Brad Sharkus down in the description, uh, which has a little bit more details on FreeSync as well as using FreeSync monitors with G-Sync graphics cards. Next up is XT5's question. He says, uh, thanks to finding this channel, I'm ready to embark on my first build. Excellent, XT5. That is like the goal of my channel. And he also says, congrats on 1 million. Thank you very much. I'm very happy about that. Probe, right now I'm leaning towards your most recent budget build with a Ryzen 3 2200G, a Ryzen 5 2500G, graphics card upgrade in the future. Will I need to buy a processor without integrated graphics when I upgrade to a discrete graphics card or will the G work just as well? You do not have to upgrade your CPU. You can still keep that CPU, just add the discrete graphics card and that will work just fine. That said, depending on the graphics card you upgrade to, I would seriously consider upgrading your CPU because the 2200G is a great bargain for about $90 to $100. It's a quad core, but it does not have simultaneous multi-threading, so it's four cores and four threads. You actually do get a bump up in CPU performance with the 2400G, because it's four cores and eight threads. That said, I would just base this on what graphics card you upgrade to. And this is gonna be generic because there's lots of variables that go into it. But if you're spending like two or $300 on your graphics card upgrade, then you can probably still get by with the 2400G as a CPU, at least. 2200G would also still probably be just fine. If you're spending much more than that, then I would definitely encourage looking at something like a Ryzen 5 2600, which you can get for about $160, $170. That would give you more cores, more threads, higher frequency and probably give you a better overall experience with your system. But what I love about it is the flexibility. You can choose to do that now, or you can choose to just stick with your current CPU, see how the performance of your graphics card does, and then maybe decide in the future, ah, uh, I would like a little bit more horsepower to the CPU, so I'll buy a new one and swap it in. Here's a kind of interesting question from Britt Scott. Can you still use a hard drive enclosure from an external hard drive after the original drive inside has died, assuming you can replace the dead drive? So uh, if so, can you mix and match HDD brands to work with the original enclosure? I don't think there's a direct answer to this question. And that's mainly because when you buy external hard drive enclosures like this, um, you there's a variety of ways that they uh, set these up. For example, I've had some WD external drives that I've decided to pull apart the enclosure to get the drive out because I thought that would be more useful for me and found that the drive inside actually has a USB interface rather than a SATA interface. So that would make it very difficult to replace the drive inside if it died because it's a little bit more proprietary and you, you would need to get one with that interface in order to plug into the external enclosure. You can buy a separate external enclosure by itself and those often can be very nice and usually those are just SATA. Um, if your external enclosure when you pull it apart and take the drive out, just has a standard SATA interface like a 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch hard drive or SSD would have, then there's a much higher likelihood that you could just get a new working hard drive, swap it in there, and it would work just fine. That said, once again, there's a slight possibility that the controller that they have installed in here has baked in firmware that looks for a drive that is of the same brand or even the same line that the uh, enclosure originally shipped with, and in that case, it probably wouldn't work the new drive. So your answer is maybe, depending on the variables in play. So pull it apart, see what the interface is. 
you can get your new drive and try it in there. And if it doesn't work, then you would just need to buy an external enclosure, which you can usually find for like 15 or 20 bucks. Here's a question from Barry the Fish. He says, Paul, what we need to know for April is, do I need to wear powder with foundation? Should I wear eyeliner underneath my eyes? Am I too old to wear red lipstick? How long should I keep my mascara? And of course, can I wear bronzer year round? And this is all, of course, a response to my April Fool's video from last year. Here it is, it's called Paul's Skincare and Makeup. And yes, my brief dabbling in uh, switching my channel from tech coverage over to covering, you know, makeup and stuff like that. My wife helped out with this video and actually had a lot of fun with it. And um, just sort of in a related note, tying into last month's probing Paul when people were asking me about like some challenging times I went through and everything. I really enjoyed this video because it was April of last year and I produced it at a time when I had been going through sort of a rough patch. And it was the first video in quite a while that sort of occurred to me I felt good about it. It was an idea that kind of grew very naturally and I did the video and I was happy with it and people seemed to enjoy it. So it for me kind of represents a turning point last year when things sort of started to look a little bit brighter. That said, I'm not gonna be doing a follow-up makeup tutorial video this year, I apologize. I will be posting a video on April Fools. It's only slightly April Foolsy, um, but let me know in the comments section if you guys really want me to sort of branch out in other silly videos like that. I had fun with this one, but for this type of content, I usually have to wait until I kind of I, I kind of really feel it. For me to force something like that, just I have a hard time doing that and not making it feel really awkward and forced, I guess. I will link that video down in the description though if you guys want to check it out, so uh, feel free to do that. Nova Jetfire next asks, are you going to LTX? That's the Linus Tech Expo. Uh, Dreamhack is setting up a big BYOC area. It's July 27th and 28th, 2019 in Vancouver, British Columbia, up in Canada. And short answer here is yes. Current plan is for me to attend LTX. Now we don't have flights booked or anything like that yet. So, you know, variables could still lead to me not going for some reason, but intending to go at this point. So if you guys are gonna be there, uh, hopefully I will get to see you in person and say hello. Sparky Energia is next um, with more of a comment than a question, but it was winter last month. It's more springtime now, if you guys can tell by my background, but he says it's 400 C in Australia today. He's literally vaporizing at his keyboard, which I imagine he would do if it was 400 C. I believe he means 40 C, but just checking our conversion here, that's 752 degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah, that would be very uncomfortable. Uh, I'm sorry to any of you Australians out there who might be going through a very hot summer right now, um, but I believe the seasons are changing at the moment, so hopefully things are easing up for you guys, um, but try to stay cool out there. And here's the last comment from last month, uh, and this is just, I wanted to say thank you guys. Um, this is only a smattering of the various responses I got, either th saying congrats on a million subs, or congrats on the new baby girl that I have uh, coming next month in April. Uh, it was just awesome to see all these responses. Michael, Taipei, Taiwan, uh, Chris, Mark andre Thank you guys all. Thanks to everyone else who posted similar comments down there. And I wanted to give you guys a little bit of news, or just, just an update, because I am planning a 1 million subscriber giveaway, although it's a little late at this point. I actually hit a million subscribers about three weeks ago. It happened while we were live on the Awesome Hardware Live Show on a Tuesday evening, which was really cool. We got to celebrate it live and we were drinking and stuff and we had fun. But I think YouTube had something weird going on and I didn't get, you're supposed to get a notification once you hit like 100,000 or a million subscribers. It says, hey, congrats and here's a code. And then you use that code to redeem your uh, award, which in this case is gonna be my gold play button, which I'm really, really looking forward to get. I wanted to do a giveaway announcement at the same time as unboxing that gold award and everything and sharing it with you guys and saying thank you and everything. Fortunately, as of yesterday, the code came through. I was able to redeem it. I'm expecting that to arrive hopefully within the next week or two. And at that point, I will be kicking off a pretty huge giveaway, which I've tried to make as international as possible. So whether you're watching uh, from the US or North America or anywhere in the world, you'll still be eligible for a decent amount of prizes. More details on that coming soon though. Uh, but guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I really wanted to say thank you once again for all of your questions. Feel free to leave me more down in the comments section for next month. Really, really looking forward to the rest of this year because uh, it's starting out pretty great. So thanks again, guys. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out. We'll see you next time.